This is Minnie Manson's dungeon. I'm Minnie Manson. This is my co-host, Grady Takino. If you like our video, please like and subscribe. I would like to talk about Malcolm X. Malcolm X is one of my heroes. I look up to him. When I was in college, I read his book because, you know, I have learning disabilities and I'm perceived as having them. And a lot of teachers would be impatient with me and say, you know what, I'm kicking you out of class. You're not paying attention. I'm like, you know what, you can't kick me out. I demand an education. You're not kicking me out. I paid for this. And I always won when I'd say that because I remember reading that Malcolm X in his book says, you don't just sit there and let shit come to you. You demand it. You demand the education. You demand a better life. Um, I like how, you know, he started out as pretty much a bad guy and a criminal and what they call a jive turkey, you know, and conking his hair, you know. I learned about conking and the black culture, especially as a black male, making it in the ra racist times of this country. It's always racist, but it was worse then. I read about how he over overcame that when he discovered Islam, when he went to Mecca, and he saw, he was, his eyes were open. He says, I see people of all races. There's a whitest guy, the blondest hair and blue eyes next to the darkest Mogadishian who was pitch black, you know, and had just in brotherhood, you know, sisterhood. And you know how they have to walk around a few times there. They, they kind of have to march a few miles. And so, you know, it, it's a big exhausting thing when you have to go to Mecca. It's not just one day. It's like for like a week or so. And most Muslims couldn't even afford to go there or dream to, but, it's the goal of every Muslim to go there at least once in their life. Like me, when I went to Hollywood, you know, all my life I wanted to go there. So anyway, I mean, I can't compare the two, obviously, because one's a religion. But he came back to the United States and he started preaching against racism instead of saying, hey, let's separate ourselves, you know. And people didn't like that. His own people didn't like that. And he was given a speech and they killed him right up on the stage. It shot him, killed him. He helped me because there was a time I didn't understand and I was racist in high school because I didn't know any better. And I even had a really cool English teacher and she, she saw that I was racist. And instead of dumping me like a piece of garbage like I would have deserved, she kept working on me every day. She was an English teacher and we'd have to write. I mean, she'd make us work for it. She didn't just give us grades here, sit there and read a magazine. Oh, here's your grade. You showed up. No, we'd have to earn it. Do a lot of papers and end up like reporting type things. And thanks to that woman, you know, she, she she taught at the school for sure for over 30 years, maybe even 40. She was, she's was she been there a long time. I wrote to her like a few years ago. It might have, must have been 10 years ago. And I, I told her, I said how I felt about Malcolm X and how he opened my eyes to the world and how he shaped and changed me, how I was able to go through college and be successful because of things I read about, how Malcolm X handed things. And she wrote back, I wish I had the letter. I should have kept that. Like I said, I've had a hard life and I've lost things for, through being homeless and whatnot. But she wrote me a real nice letter and she says, I'm proud of you. I'm glad that you finally learned how things are, you know. I was very relieved and happy that I saw the right way of thinking and not having hate in my heart, just like Malcolm X. If he could overcome hate, and if there's anyone that had a right to have hate, it was a black, a, a black man in the United States sending them off to Vietnam just to come back and be spit on and called the N-word, not even have a right to use a fountain or sit in a bus where they want or in a restaurant. People like Malcolm X are necessary, and he, he used to say by any means necessary, which is pretty cool. He, he also said about the president, the chickens coming home, the roosts and all that, when the president got killed, a lot of people were angry about that. Well, I've been, I've been silent for the past 90 days because of uh, some statements I made concerning the president of the United States, uh, which were distorted. They were distorted. And yes. And what did you say, and, Malcolm? Well, I said the same thing that everybody says, that uh, his assassination was the result of the climate of hate. But only, I, only, only I said the chickens came home to roost, and which means the same thing. Uh, uh, climate of hate means that this is this is the result of something. And when I said chickens coming home to roof, I made, uh, chickens coming home to roof, I said the same thing. He was just trying to make a point. He made a very good impression on me. I love when he'd talk about not only Mecca and Islam and the fruit of Islam and Wallace Fard, who was one of the founders of the Nation of Islam. I know I learned a lot about that. It was interesting to learn that stuff. That, that's just about the most interesting, necessary book, the autobiography of Malcolm X. And that book should be handed to every high school student, not just African-American, but white, Asian, 
what, you know, whatever, every single student that passes through as a sophomore, they should be given that book, study this book, you know, learn it because Malcolm X is really one of the best and most influential heroes and leaders ever, if not in a century, but ever. He stands out. He's a hero. Well, Nation of Islam is based out of Chicago. Did you ever see did you ever see any of the Nation of Islam members selling their newspaper yeah. the final it's, call? Yeah, they would hand up the final call. They'd have the suits on real nice, the bow ties, you know, looking all professional and neat and orderly. I'd see them on the CTA. I'd see them downtown. They had the Chicago Defender newspaper as well. But yeah, they'd be handing out the final call. And once in a while, I would get a copy. You know, I, I read the Ch Chicago Defender a lot because, you know, I went to Columbia College. I was There was a guy there who ended up working for the Chicago Sun-Times. His grandmother worked for the Defender. And I didn't know any better than I'm like, that's a communist newsletter. He's like, no, it's not. Like, he never talked to me again after I said that. But, you know, as time went on, I realized that that is not a communist newspaper. It was a stupid thing. I didn't know any better. It's actually a very good newspaper. It's better than the Chicago Sun-Times now. It's very interesting to read that. It's hard to find it now because a lot of the newsstands shut down after COVID. So you got to kind of go like in the south side or the west side to see it. Did you ever try one of their bean pies? No. Oh, I have. It's very tasty. It's kind of like a uh, sweet potato pie, except it's made out of beans. I don't like sweet potatoes, though, or beans. I like peas, though, and I like lima beans. Did you ever have any bad experiences with any Nation of Islam members? Like maybe they wouldn't sell you the paper because of your color? No. I heard that they'd done that. Some people would. I was respectful. I said, this looks really cool. I want to learn from here. I said, this is interesting. And they let me have the paper because of that. But you're right. There, a lot of times they will not let a non-white person. Maybe I don't know how it is now, but back then when I was in college and you know the 19, 1990s, 1900s, the 1990s when I was in school, you know it was like that. I do remember something like that. But they never denied it to me. I've seen other people like try to get it done. They would be like putting their hand out and they'd be ignored. Yeah, I remember a lot of strange claims in the final call, such as. There would be ads for an AIDS cure that Farrakhan came up with, and it would be like for sale for $199. Never heard of that. Have you seen Farrakhan around town? I've never met him or seen him, no. What's the general feel of Farrakhan around Chicago? Well, nobody really has anything against him, and they don't talk about him too much nowadays, but, you know, when he was more active and saying controversial things. I guess people had issues with it, but you know, I never did. And I never re really heard people talking about it too much. It was more like in the late nineties, maybe mid nineties. Well, I believe they want segregation. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know if they still do, but I know the nation of Islam's helped a lot of people that were down and out and they've gone, they actually marched up to, to jail houses and demanded that people be let go. And this, come out there with their suits and everything and kind of paramilitary, you know, in their stance. And they'd stand all their lining the street until they got action, you know. So they helped a lot of people that nobody else would help. I would recommend reading that autobiography of Malcolm X and seeing the movie as well. The part where he says Jesus was black and the priest's face fell. Priceless. I love that. Jesus is black, by the way. I would recommend reading his book, seeing the movie, you know, have an open mind about it. Let your kids read that book and talk to their, your kids about it before they even go to school, because maybe the school won't give them the book. It's a good idea for every young person to read that. It's my opinion. And if they don't understand it, talk to them about it. Don't just say, here the book, go, here's the book, go over and read it. You know, be active with your kids and with whatever situation you're in, whether you're a teacher or just a parent. Talk to kids about that and read it with, with them and discuss it. Discuss how you can use his ideas in his book, like demanding an education. If someone says you're dumb, say, so what? You know what? I demand an education. It's your job to teach me. So don't take no for an answer and stand up for yourself is basically what Malcolm X is about. Minnie Manson does merch packs, super fan kits. I have three levels of merch kits, the $30, the $40,
and a $50 super fan kit where you get everything. You don't have to pay shipping if you're in the United States. You get this, you get the big $10 five inch sticker. You get all the regular stickers, the three inch ones, the four inch ones. You get this, 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 this. I think I'll call him mini me, mini, mini me. And you get this. By the way, this one, the sticker and the magnet, which you see here, they work under fluorescent lighting, black light, blue light, purple light. The $40 kit, you'll get three magnets, all the stickers. Of course, you get the eight by 10. With the $30 kit, you still get the eight by 10. You get that with all three kits. You get two magnets. You get all these stickers with all three merch kits. You can order these directly through Mini Manson at mini underscore Manson at yahoo.com. My cash app is Mini Manson Talent. So is my PayPal, Mini Manson Talent.